Welcome to lessons from my mentors. And one of my early mentors taught me the concept of authenticity, you know, because as a young leader, especially, I felt like I had to be exactly like, you know, the leaders that I aspired to be. So there's some leaders in the organization and like, I want to be like them. And so I tried to take on their persona or the way they act and it just didn't work. And it was awkward and, and sort of funny, but I think a lot of people today really struggle with this. And so that I'm so glad that my mentor shared this with me and helped me along the path. And everyone's got to find their own comfort level. But I get a lot of people who ask me, how can I be like you? I know it sounds so funny saying that. Some of you will like roll your eyes. And I, I kind of do the same thing. So we're together, we're together on that. But what they're talking about most of the time, like when I when I you know, dig into it a little bit with them is they're, they're talking about like the way that you are and authenticity is sort of the word for it is you don't get a lot of pretentiousness from me. You're pretty much, my goal has always been to be the same person. If you see me in church, if you see me at the mall, you know, at the ball game, wherever I am, that it's the same person. And so I don't have to worry about putting on a different mask, you know, in different situations. It's just, who I am. And so I, I've literally had many people ask me that. And I sort of share with them what I'm share with you. And that's just to be real. Uh, it may be like, I don't know how helpful some of these suggestions might be because like, well, how do you be real? Because if you don't know, man, I don't know if I can tell you how, but it's just to be honest, to be, don't be afraid of showing your feelings. I think that's part of it. We feel like we have to have this bravado and be emotionless, feeling less. And I, I don't do it. I, I show my emotions. It is, it's awkward sometimes, but it's like who I am. It's being genuine. So if I have the sense that I need to cry because I'm touched by a situation, I don't try to stop it. Or, I mean, I do try to hide it. I mean, I'm like, I don't want to like all start bawling and stuff, but if that happens, it happens. Uh, so sometimes when I'm presenting or in a meeting and someone touches me, you know, it's like, I'll just be authentic is who I am. And, and, and I share a lot. And so I'm super transparent. So that's another thing is to be as transparent as possible. If you want to be authentic, there is one person tries to um, copy me and it's, it's just kind of funny and I feel bad for that person, but they'll try, they'll try to, they'll see sort of like me posting and they'll try to emulate some of the posts and stuff. But when it's not genuine, you can see right through it. It's like, no, that's not really them. In fact, they, they pay someone to, to do that. And, so I would avoid that. Don't don't pay someone to be your voice. I get it. If you're a high profile individual and you need to pump out a bunch of information about what your company is doing, it's kind of like generics. And maybe depending, you know, if it's a giant company and you, you know, but I, I think it's always best when it comes from the person's voice themselves. So so that's one way of doing it. So, you know, it's being real. It's being transparent. It's removing the facade it's allowing the emotions to flow without trying to uh stop it another thing is listening so a lot of people don't feel like they have time to listen and listening is for other people so they just want to lead and so they don't listen to other people they just want to talk so they spend up spend up doing the most talking and not really listening. And I think when you when you listen to others, they feel cared for and they feel like you're gen going back to the being genuine. And so that's another thing. So if you're one of those that is just super verbose and I have to watch it sometimes too, I can go and tell you a million stories is, you know, just listen and, and validate people and sh do active listening and show that you're listening and, and really care. You know, this actually goes to why, you know, this wasn't part of what I was thinking about saying, but it, it just came to me and I would go with it. And that's another thing. You just go with it. Is uh I got married a second time. So I had a divorce. The we'll talk about that some other time. And I I fell in love with this beautiful woman. In fact, you can, her picture is on either side of me. This like way above me. Like if I'm a if if I whatever rating scale you might have. She's like 10x, whatever that is of me. So whatever I place myself, she's 10 times that. It's like, how 
will I ever attract and retain someone like that? And I think what it came down to, well, so what to ask Dr. Simran herself, but I've heard her say it, is I, I just listened and I cared. I think our first date, we shut down that restaurant. We were there like three hours and I was genuinely just interested in her. And, and she she's a great conversationalist as well. So she asked questions. I certainly spoke, but I, I tried to just keep my mouth shut as much as I could and just listen and validate and, and show, do active listening. And, and I think that was part of like what caused her like, Hey, this person really cares about me. They don't, they're not all oh, just the way I look or whatever, but they really care about me. And I've tried to maintain that. Um, so you can ask her how I do. I won't tell you I'm great at it, but I've, I really try, you know, last night I came home after a few days on the road and we went out, took her out to dinner and I just listened, you know, cause we're catching up on her work, her practice, uh, our kids, what are we doing for Thanksgiving and you know, all that kind of stuff. Just listen. And then they feel she felt loved. And, you know, so you do the same with other people and that's how you become, uh, authentic person. So that's another thing uh, that you can do. The other is, is feel. And I, and I touched on that already on the emotion side, but be a feeling person. Don't be stoic. You know, again, people are afraid to show emotions and for a wide variety of reasons. And I'm, I got over it, you know, and just show that I feel I care. Another thing it has to be action. So a lot of these ideas I just shared are action, but the next level is showing it by investing time in it. So I'll give you some examples like for the workplace. And obviously these there's equal examples outside of the workplace, but this is sort of work oriented uh, lessons from my mentor, but they apply everywhere. So I never missed a funeral. So unfortunately, you know, when you lead for a while, and especially in larger teams, there's going to be people that die. And uh, I was always there. In fact, one time I spoke at someone's funeral. It wasn't planned, but this gentleman who passed, I felt sorry, you know, at the funeral because there weren't a lot of people there. And I don't think his family knew they had some family challenges. I don't think his family knew what value their dad brought to the health system and how what his dad had done is super important. They just thought he was a programmer, but actually he developed programs that saved people's lives. So I don't think they ever heard that. So I, I just felt like I needed to get up and tell them. And that's what I did. So it's just going, being out there, going to the funerals, you know, of course we have busy lives and I'd rather have not use that Saturday afternoon to go to the funeral, but I knew it was the right thing. It's going to the weddings when you're invited. It's going to the bar mitzvahs when you're invited. So whatever I got invited to, I I, I tried to go. I, I'm sure there's a couple that I missed along the way, but I've always tried to be there. Whenever I've had someone sick or in the hospital, I visited them. Now, to the extent like if someone doesn't want to be visited, of course, I didn't force it. I would normally try to figure that out. Um, but most people wanted to be visited. And so I always did. And then I just ask people too, and this goes back to authenticity and being genuine. And so it's going to be different for everyone. But for me, you know, I am a person of faith and I've seen healing, you know, through prayer. And so I always pray. I always ask people, can I pray for you? Do you mind if I pray for you? And if someone says, yeah, I do mind, I wouldn't do it, obviously. But no one ever has. I think, you know, especially when people are in time of need, they're pretty open they, and they just want to feel the love. And that's what, that's what it is. It's a lot of love. And just ask people, you know, hey, can I pray for you? What, what can I do for you? You know, one person, I would sneak in. I remember I'd take my oldest son with me. He was probably eight years old. You know, my it was the spouse of one of my best workers. And he was in neurointensive care. And his days were numbered. And they still had him on a restricted diet, which is kind of ridiculous, right? And uh, so I asked him, you know, what he liked best and he liked, you know, bagels and different things. And so my son and I, we'd always go and buy the food he wasn't allowed to eat. It didn't lead to his demise that this was, I'm not suggesting doing anything like, you know, that didn't absolutely make sense, but, you know, keeping someone from enjoying their, a cup of coffee or, or whatever. 
it, it, when their time is coming, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. So anyways, uh, do stuff where you can, you know, serve others in that way and, and, and just be there in all those different, that's, that's authenticity. If you, if you talk about authenticity and you do a couple things, but if you actually like you're all in, that's when you become this authentic person. And again, I don't have to worry. And I'm sure it's not as cut and dry as I make it. I get it. And someone could say, oh, what about that, Ed? Yeah, you're probably right. But generally, I am the exact same person, no matter where you meet me, on some sporting event, climbing a mountain, whatever, uh, at the grocery store. And then I don't have to worry about switching personas. Oh, I got to dress a certain way and look a certain way because someone from work might see me. No, and that was kind of fun, actually. So I would go running with people um, out of work, and, or they'd see me. And I'd go up to them like uh, there was this uh, with the memories coming back to me was some take 10K race in Cleveland. And it was some of my people. I didn't know they were racing in it. They didn't know I was racing in it. So I was like, saw them. But then they were staring at me because I have a lot of tattoos and I was wearing sort of a running singlet shirt. And uh, so you could see a lot of the tattoos. Normally, you know, you wouldn't see it in the workplace. They were like all shocked and stuff. Uh, but that's just being authentic. It's just who I am. I'm not going to cover up because. I'm concerned about what you're going to think about me. And so that's really the last thing is, is, is self-esteem. I think it goes back to just having self-esteem. So if you find yourself like struggling with a lot of these things, it could be one of the root cause things is sort of like the self-esteem and, you know, so I just like, Hey, I am who I am. And yeah, I do want to change. I want to keep changing. I want to try to improve myself. Absolutely. For sure. And there's plenty of room to do that, but I'm not going to, not be who I am and believe in myself. And so if you don't like me because I have some tattoos, that's okay. I get it. I, I think I was probably like that too when I was a lot younger. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to make everyone happy. And so it doesn't have to impact my self-esteem. That was the lesson that I learned from a military mentor is I really struggled at first when I was a platoon leader. I wanted everyone to like me. And it's and I was an authentic self. I was I was learning it right. I, I wasn't just born this way. I was just kind of feeling my way around and, and learning it. And I thought everyone's going to like me, but you know some people didn't like me. And I remember like lamenting to our company commander, yeah, oh, Captain Davis. You know, I don't know, you know, Sergeant So and So. I don't know. Some of these guys don't like me. And he and he basically said, hey, if everyone likes you, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so that was rather free. And it's the same thing. Yeah. Be your authentic self. Are there people going to dump on you? Are there people going to laugh at you? Are there people going to behind the scenes, you know, try to go after you? Yes. But have enough self-esteem is what I'm saying, you know, to where that, yeah, that doesn't matter. It, it, that's their issue. Your issue is just to be genuine to yourself. So in summarizing, you know, if you, if you're striving to be a genuine person, be the same person, that's, that's the first step, be the same person, no matter the situation, work, play, home, whatever, be the same person. Then I think your authenticity, assuming you're authentic at home, is going to um, come out. Two, release your emotions. It's okay to be emotional. Don't be stoic. If you want to cry, cry. If you if you want if if you want to pray for someone, ask them. And if they let you pray, awesome. If they don't, awesome. Um, Heal. And then, like I talked about in the stories, go places. So when people need you and they're not going to ask you, that's the thing, right? You get that. You, you just have to have to go and make yourself available. And like I said, no one ever said, no, we don't want the CIO coming to visit me in the hospital or anything like that. In fact, their families just were elated that someone, an executive would come and see them. Uh, because, you know, the opposite happens. We all retreat. We should push in. That's what makes a person authentic, pushing in like that. So hopefully that helps someone. It helped me a lot, hence why I'm so glad to share it. So I know you've got finite time. Thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you at the next drop of Lessons from My Mentors.